This is Generation Green's Wildflower Project, the podcast that starts conversations to create connections on this journey we're all doing called life. Together, we can grow through what we go through and bloom in spite of it all. So let's be like wildflowers and see where the wind blows us. Hello and welcome to Generation Green's Wildflower Project. I'm your host, Sherry Sobey, and today I am visiting with uh, the fabulous Leonard Taylor, who's located at 246 McDermott Avenue here in the Exchange. Uh, Leonard is a well-known fashion designer. He creates high-quality artistic statement pieces that I can totally attest to, uh, having now acquired three of those wonderful pieces. (laughs) Good morning, Leonard, and thank you for uh, joining me. Good morning. Morning. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to talk a little bit to you about one thing. First of all, you radiate joy. Okay, <laughs> like are you always a happy person? Uh, most of the time, but when I have my, you know, everything in life has yin and yang. And when you have your ups, you feel those ups, and then obviously you have to feel the downs. And when I'm having a down day, I'm having a down day, and that's one of the things that I like to express. I don't just radiate the the joy out there i also put out there that yeah i do have bad days and when i'm feeling bad that's just you know i i have to show that side of it too because there's people that can connect to that yeah absolutely i mean we're we're doing life and we all have those good and bad days and i mean we i guess we have our things that we go to do you have a go-to is art your thing to go to when you're having those down times definitely definitely yeah. if I, I my my wife actually knows that uh if i haven't painted in a couple of days she's like uh you're kind of cranky when was the last time you painted and and uh, I said, oh, about three days ago. And she said, you maybe should just go upstairs for a few minutes, yeah. paint a little bit, and then come back down. <laughs> totally. So what came first? Was it the art part of it or the design? Uh, art was was first. Uh, it's in my family. Like my, my father is a painter. He's an architect by trade, but he also painted, you know, uh, almost every every day or every second day. Uh, my mother is an interior designer and a painter. Uh, my aunt, Kathy, is a full-time painter. So painting is just part of my... my it's in your blood. It's, it's who, yeah, it's, it's, it's who I am and it's what I need to do. Uh, and I always used uh, art as an avenue for uh, the fashion or the fashion for an avenue of the art, because not everybody needs a nice painting. Everybody needs a nice shirt. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, and it's amazing that you can still maintain that as an outlet when you're doing it for a job. Um, cause I know having dabbled in being a, a professional artist for a period of time when it was such an outlet for me at one time. And then when I try to do it professionally, I don't know how I, I kind of didn't get that same feel. So how do you still maintain that? Uh, it, it's, it, it comes down to just living in the moment. A lot of, a lot of it is that, uh, art, art comes when it comes. And, uh, I was, you know, my father was visiting from Australia this summer and he, he looked at me and I said, I don't know how you do it. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, you just can turn it on and turn it off. Uh, because you know, with all the different creative things I do and the live painting, you know, I, I can't just go to a live painting event and then just not paint, you mm-hmm. know, because the, the it's not flowing. So I had to develop a way that I could channel, uh, channel that inner painting and, and that, that inner creativity uh, on, on a whim because there is no separation between anything really. So uh, I, I looked at that and I went, well, if there's no separation, that means that there's no off switch, you know, that there's no like time that it's not there it's always got to be there it's just a matter of tapping into it and opening up the channels that uh that you need opened when you create create art Mm -hmm. and i haven't experienced any of your live paintings so do you do these just when you're um when you're traveling like i know you you travel a lot you do a lot of different uh runway stuff and but i the live stuff where are you doing the live painting uh, i do a lot of charity events with the live painting uh i do some corporate events as well where people you know the different corporations for a party or whatever will will hire me to do something uh and then the live painting i do trade shows across canada and into the us and uh when i'm at those trade 
trade shows, I will live paint right in my booth so that people can see what I do and how I do it. Uh, and it's just kind of an interactive, immersive experience for those people who happen to be walking by at the time or happen to be at the events that I'm at. It's uh, it's pretty fun to be able to interact with the people because a lot of uh, a lot of people will go, oh, they're painting. I can't interrupt, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I'm lucky that I've developed a way that I can paint and talk to people at the same time. So uh, it, it's fun to be able to take questions and things on the fly as I'm doing what I do. Oh, totally. No, that sounds awesome. Well, and I've been here now for a couple of, uh, you, well, you did a luncheon and you did a, um, the, breakfast one the brunch one yeah and I love this whole marketing idea okay because it's so uh, no pressure it's lovely get to actually meet and talk with you and I find that's a huge thing with makers too is when you get that connection when you build that bond and you know their story you really want to support them and it's uh it's just so uh, lovely to be able to see ladies walking around wearing your clothes and everybody sharing their stories about about these clothing and uh, about this clothing line and how they're using it and how you can wear it differently. And um, it really seems to uh, be a contagious thing here in the room where people are really saying, oh, you have to get that. And really looking at you and saying, I mean, this one's good. And you're good at that too, where you can (laughs) look at somebody and you can say, this is what you need. Yeah, well, that's, you know, you develop those kinds of skills over over time. You know, I can look at a a woman's body and go this, 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 and this, and this, and this will not work. You know, I can, I have that ability. And I I look at you and your persona and the person that you are are and your skin type and and really define your style and what you need to do to accomplish the things in your life that you want to you know my goal in life is to make people smile and feel good whether it's my art my clothing my words I just want to make people smile and feel good because there's so much of the world is people just like putting you down I just want to bring you up and make you feel good yeah and that's what I I find that my clothing does a lot and and why I I do the events the way that I do is because uh a lot of the women who buy my work who are very like-minded people so they all they think about the same things they they dream about the same things they talk about the same things so uh putting together uh, an event where they can all feel comfortable and safe and and open to talk about the different things that they want to talk about that's what it's all about is creating that sense of community oh and it's lovely because it's like you know, so casual. Everybody is always um, so open to, and you're switching tables. And um, but I, I have really enjoyed the experience. No one's been in a rush to move. And then you bring in uh, Karen to cater. Yeah, and she's amazing as well. We have to just give her a little plug there. Uh, what is the name of her catering company? Uh, Karen Peters uh, is is I think just the name. Of, That's is, just of, the name. I of think it? it's just Karen. I mean, Peters. she's unbelievable, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it's Karen Peters Catering. I think is, okay. is what it is. Yeah, yeah. no, lovely. Um, so yeah, when you are putting that intention into your garments that you want people to feel good, I think it really is released that way. I think it's interpreted that way. People feel that I know I do. I feel that way when I wear my piece and actually I haven't told you this yet, but the very first time I had purchased a piece from you, it was because of a new venture, uh, a new, uh, a new experience I was going to be, um, starting and uh, I had connected with some people and became uh, a speaker for United Way this year. And it was a really scary time and I needed something that was gonna really make me feel not only confident, I suppose, but comfortable. Um, I didn't wanna have to be really thinking too much and so I got the Brenda, right? The high-low Brenda, the black one, because, and it's become like my almost like this superpower I have because I'm serious. I, I cannot believe how I felt in it. Oh, and that's great. That getting makes me up so and happy. talking in front of people for the very first time about something very personal too. You know, I was sharing my story. Um, that was, it was going to be uh, a really, um, I guess, soul bearing moment for me. So I couldn't do that without having something that gave me a little bit of protection, I guess, in a way. Right. Yeah. That's totally. how it made me feel. And I really want to share that with oh, you because you. I've never had something that really makes me feel that comfortable. Yeah. So much so that, I, you know, I had to get another piece because I can't <laughs> wear the same black one. Um, but I absolutely love it. So, you know, thank you for creating My uh, something 
that can actually make somebody feel that great. And my coworker, Lori, who said, you know, she just didn't think you would have anything that would fit her. I mean, she's shorter as well. And, and, and you fit everybody. Uh, yeah, right? that I do. That is what you say. Yeah, I do. You know, triple extra small and the triple extra large because everybody deserves to have something in their wardrobe that makes them feel the way that you just described. You know, yeah. everybody wants to have that confidence and, and sophistication and ab- about them, you know, and that warmth, you know. Um, one of my styles, the Betsy is, you know, nicknamed the, the warm hug because so many mm. women have come back to me and said, like, I feel like I'm getting a warm hug all day when I'm wearing my Betsy, you know, yeah. and Brenda does the same thing for women. You know, it just gives you that confidence in that way to, to, to be your true authentic self. And that's what it's all about in today's, you know, it's 2019 now mm-hmm. and it's all about being who you are and flying your own flag and that's that's the best part of of what i do yeah and and that is a hard one and i think like the older i have gotten i mean the more comfortable i've gotten in my skin and knowing who i am and that does take a while but for someone like you you can you can pretty much see that a lot in people too like when you're saying you know i i can i know what's going to make you feel good here i know what you're all about just from looking at you right away how someone carries themselves right what maybe they need um and i think authenticity if you can you know kind of you know look look at you you know like that's authentic right you got a tape measure here for your tie the hat is a statement piece this art on your clothing i mean that is I mean, really representing who you are. Yeah, definitely. And it's, that's beautiful. I yeah. mean, I love that. Uh-huh, thank you. I love it. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about too was, uh, this wasn't always what the dream was though, was it? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and, okay, so tell us a little bit about that and then how you kind of, made that pivotal change and had found a new direction. So I was, uh, when I was young, I, I played a lot of soccer when I was young and, uh, I was playing on teams that, you know, I was the youngest guy by eight years. And one of the guys said, you know, go try, go see if you can play over overseas. So, and I went, well, yeah, I guess why not? Why don't, why don't I? Uh, so I did, I went overseas to Europe and I started playing soccer, uh, in Glasgow in Scotland and I was doing quite well. Uh, it was, but it was, it was honestly, it was very difficult because I was 18 years old. I didn't, I told my parents I had all these connections. In reality, I had one week booked in a hostel and that was all the plans I had made. Uh, I brought my soccer cleats and I just started playing, you know, anywhere I saw a game, I just bring my cleats up and can I, can I play? Uh, so I did that and I was doing quite well, but, uh, honestly, I, I hurt my knee and the coach that I was uh, I was under just said, you know, call me when you're better. Here's the different clinics you can go to. Um, and my knee swelled up big time. And I just I, I literally sat in a flat uh, in the ghetto of, of Glasgow <laughs> and uh, stared out the window and go, well, OK, well, this isn't this is clearly not working. Uh, what am I going to do now? And then when my knee got a little bit better uh, as a pastime, because I had no no support network you know I had nobody there I would just walk around to the different shops and the different high street shops and see what you know fashions were out there and I would try on clothes that I had really no business trying on because they would be like three four or five hundred pounds and I could barely afford three dollars three pounds for a meal Uh, so I couldn't afford them but I just you know I just wanted to try it there something was calling me to to do it. Uh, so I try them on and I just felt better about myself and who I was. And I'd look in the mirror and go, wow, you know, you are worth it, you know, because I was in a really low spot, you know, alone at 18, no yeah. support around. Uh, and the, the fashions really made me feel good. So when I came back to Canada, I would look around at the different shops here and there wasn't really anything in my style. So I just I said, well, I'm just going to start making stuff. So I just that's what I did. I just picked up a sewing machine, picked up uh, a notepad, started sketching what I wanted to to make. And then I would find people that could teach me how to make it and apprentice and, you know, do the things that, you know, when you apprentice, you don't get to just be doing everything you want to do right off the bat. You have to sweep the floors. You have right. to pay your dues uh, uh, in a sense. And that's how I got into into fashion you know so painting painting was always part of what I did but I I looked at it and went well a career in painting is not you know that's that's difficult uh to do because not everybody needs a painting you know and clothing was something that 
you know, I could, it was immersive and I could, I could feel it. I could do it. Um, the product didn't go bad as food does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, so I could make, I could make garments and I could make things that, uh, that people could wear and people could feel good about themselves and feel the experience that I had when I first got into fashion and first tried on some really nice stuff is that I, I felt better about who I was and to be able to do that for other people was, was huge. You know, it was really an awesome experience. So that's, that's how I got into it. That's how I got into that's fashion. That's so amazing though. Right. And I, cause a lot of times I mean, people can be staring back at that door that's just closed. Right. And you'll never progress if you keep staring. And so to be able to find inspiration and I always think like the, from the hardest moments is where you find, um, the best things that the things that you're meant to be doing or the things that challenge you i suppose are going to be the biggest growth times yeah totally and with with what i do and 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 my network and and what i always try to express to people is in those darkest times there's always a silver lining and there's always something that can be learned you know yeah maybe maybe you know this dream cr- was crushed mm-hmm. but in that moment of desperation and in that moment of you know, utter darkness, there always is something that you can look at and go, oh, well, maybe that's, that's it. You know, I'm a firm believer of everything happens when it's supposed to happen. Um, and you just have to keep positive in all, in all scenarios and, and, and look for that silver lining as hard as it may be at that time to look for that silver lining. Uh, there is something that you can learn and there's something that can make you grow into someone better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I've, um, met your, your sister who's very involved here too, and your mom who is just beautiful and well, your sister's beautiful too, but how, uh, how much inspiration do they give you for creating some of your design? Well, uh, Laurel is, uh, is, is my rock. I couldn't do what I do without her. I actually said, we joke about it that if she ever left, I would just quit. I would be like, yeah, I'm done. Aww, <laughs> I'm done. So I quit. Wonderful. Um, She's a, she's a great inspiration as well. Uh, she's, she was kind of like my mom growing up, you know, she was very always, you know, attentive to me and checking, make sure I was going to school and I was doing the different things. Uh, my parents were very, uh, busy, very involved in my life until I was probably about 10. And then, you know, they had other complications happening in their lives. And, uh, that's really when I realized that, Oh, my parents are just people they're not superheroes yeah. and they've got to do their own things and so I kind of did my own thing and Laurel Laurel's an inspiration in that way that she always looked out for me and is still looking out to, for me this to this day so she's a big inspiration and uh, you know we talk about different designs and stuff like that because I've, I've got a lot of crazy ideas you know mm-hmm. for every every good idea I have I have nine or ten that are just absolutely useless <laughs> but and she she kind of sifts through those and and my mom's an inspiration because she could pretty much do anything creatively she you know she does interior design work yeah. she does hand knit crochet work she does fine needlepoint she does painting she does she does so many different things yeah. um and she can do you know whatever she wants to do so she's definitely an inspiration in that in that sense that if you don't if you can't do it you can either you have two doors you can go well oh, i can't do it or you can open the other door and go yeah i can i can do whatever i need to do as long as i put my mind to it and i put my energy in that positive direction then i can achieve and do anything i want that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And I know Laurel too, she's even doing some jewelry design too. Hopefully yeah. we're going to see some of that here. Yeah, we're going to see <laughs> more of her her work as uh, this year is is kind of one of those we, we set it up that, you know, we need someone to, uh, cause Laurel does a lot of the day-to-day operations and things that, you know, take up a lot of her time that she really doesn't need to do. Cause she's extremely creative person as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of freeing up some more of her time to do what she needs to do. And, and, and I think we'll only blossom from there. Wonderful. Um, so in closing up here, um, cause I've already taken up enough of your busy time, <laughs> came into you already like, you know, cutting up some fabric and what have you. Oh, no worries. No worries. <laughs> um, how important is community and what does community mean to you? Community is everything. You know, if you don't have a community, you don't have a tribe, then, you know, you're, you're a lone wolf yeah. and no one ever likes to be the lone wolf as much as they say they do. They really don't. Everybody wants that hug. Everybody wants that. Uh, that vote of confidence and that appreciation and a community to me is that is is building a network of people around you who support you who support 
uh, what you do and and support the community initiatives. You know, we're lucky that we're down here in the Exchange District. It's the most beautiful neighborhood in our entire city, uh, province for that matter, probably. And it's filled with artists and creatives. And, you know, it's really an unparalleled uh, part of the city that no, you know, a lot of Winnipeggers take for granted. You know, you, you see these people coming from New York and Toronto and Vancouver and, and LA and they come and experience the exchanges and they're like, wow, this is a hidden gem. Nobody knows about this. This is totally. extremely, extremely powerful. And then Winnipeg is like, oh yeah, it's just the exchange. I can't find parking, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> and, and I, I, I like to joke about that because it's like, yeah, you can't find parking. We're a city. You, you can't park wherever you want. You have to park your car and walk for two blocks. It's not a big deal. But yeah. you know, so many Winnipeggers are like, oh my God, I had to park and walk for two minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get over it. It's not a big deal. I mean, really, it is a walkable neighborhood and it's meant to be experienced as a walkable uh, neighborhood. When I pull into the exchange, I just feel like I'm coming home. And I don't know if it's just the 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 history or the romance of it, you know, um, in these heritage buildings. Uh, there's just something that it, uh, it uh, whispers to me. And uh, I definitely love being a part of it here and am so fortunate to have found a, a new home here. So, yeah, I can totally feel that too and yeah the parking thing is like just park and walk you have to park and walk when you go anywhere you just don't realize it yeah right because your destination is right there and you're seeing it as you're walking yeah it's just a mindset yeah oh, totally it is and you know winnipeggers are used to being able to park wherever they want to park and they can drive to their destination and they can just park right in front of it but we became a city you know we have the influx of people now that uh that supports it being an actual city so yes we had the designation of a city a long time ago but it didn't feel like a city it was a small town mm -hmm. uh now it's a city and there's enough people and a population density that it'll you know makes it so yeah it's a city you you, you know go to downtown toronto and try and park right oh in front God, of the yeah. place that you want to not going to happen even downtown calgary you can't just park where you want to you have to park and walk and that's yeah. just a reality that winnipeggers have to get over and have to just kind of be okay with it's like okay yeah we're an awesome city i have to park and walk a couple blocks <laughs> yeah who cares it's not a big deal you know and and that and that goes back to um that reality then and, and you creating creating and seeing your own reality so yes you have to park three blocks away but what cool experiences can you have in that three blocks that you never th would have had had you not had to walk Absolutely. you know you might you might see something cool an architectural feature of a building or you might you might bump into a friend of yours because let's face it it's winnipeg everybody knows everybody uh -huh. you might bump into somebody you haven't seen for 10 years yeah. and that experience would not have happened to you had you been able to just park your car and walk right into the place you want so start looking at 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 life and in a different way you know yeah i have to park over here okay cool what what kind of opportunities are available to me right now because i'm that. because i had to to yeah. do something out of my way or out of my my comfort zone. Yeah, I love that. It's all about perspective and changing our mindsets. And no, that's that's fabulous. I love it. So I hope more people are going to want to come and experience Leonard Taylor um, right here at 246 McDermott Avenue in the Exchange. Come walk and visit and take a look and see what the Exchange has to offer. Uh, but definitely come and try on a piece. It's going to change your life. I swear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 a joy to do what I do. And having a, a retail storefront where people can just walk in at any time and see see the garments and, and really be helped through having a new garment or if they want to just come in and do their own thing. You know, it's that's that's why we're open. That's why we we chose the Exchange District to be our, our base of operations because it's a beautiful neighborhood. Come down and experience the best neighborhood in the province. Thanks so much, Leonard. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, until next time, uh, just be a wildflower and keep blowing, see where you land, and then bloom. Bye.